Hi, I'm Jen Buchanan, Watershed Protection Director at Tip of the Mint Watershed Council. Thanks for tuning in and your interest in rain gardens. Today, I'm at the Greenway Rain Garden here in Petoskey. This project serves as a great example of what makes a rain garden both beautiful and functional. One of my favorite things about this rain garden is what we replaced. Before this was all parking area, so hardscape where runoff could not infiltrate into the ground. In partnership with the city, we found a better use for this space, this rain garden. So now, water that normally or otherwise would have run off into the bay is now absorbed into the ground at this location. As you can see, this location has sidewalks and streets and buildings nearby. So its urban location serves as a great example to neighbors about what they too can do on their properties to help protect water quality by installing a rain garden. Runoff from this nearby parking lot enters into the rain garden through this cobble area where debris and sediment filters out. The remaining runoff enters into the basin before absorbing into the ground. In heavy events, the basin might fill up but doesn't overtop its banks. As you can see, this rain garden has a lot of surface area and volume, but in a really heavy event, if the water doesn't absorb into the ground quickly, it'll flow into this drain, which then enters into the city storm sewer. The key to all good rain gardens are the plants, and the best plants for rain gardens are deep rooting native plants. This garden features over a dozen different Michigan native plants, from ground covers and bunch grasses to shrubs and perennials. Deep rooting plants help absorb the water into the ground, removing a lot of the pollutants, including the nutrients, which then they use to help grow. This is one of my personal favorites, blue-eyed grass. It stays short and looks great all year round. It does well in all kinds of conditions and is very adaptable. As you can see, it blooms during the day and night it closes up. This is Joe Pieweed one of the best workhorses for any rain garden. It has very deep roots, but also grows quite tall. It's best suited for the lowermost parts of any rain garden where the, most of the water will be concentrated. Here are a couple more of my favorite plants I like to use in rain gardens. This is Nodding Wild Onion. You can see it's starting to form some flower heads, which will open up later in the summer and reveal a white flower. I like to use these in areas where it's a little drier it also makes a really great ground cover. Over time, this will fill in like a blanket of nodding wild onion. Over here, this is a little blue stem. It's a bunch grass. It'll get taller, about three feet, maybe a little taller. In the fall, the foliage will turn more of a burgundy color and form a seed head at the top. I like to use it as well in drier areas, and it's great for stabilizing slopes. This is beard tongue, or penstemon. The purplish color doesn't occur naturally. This is a cultivar of the native species. It is very adaptable to many different soil types. You can see the purple color in this rain garden adds nice contrast to the other plants. This is blue flag iris. It likes to be in the bottom areas of a rain garden where it's gonna have more moist soils. This one happens to be blooming right now. And in time, more of these will spread and the base of the rain garden will be filled with iris. This is purple coneflower, popular garden flower. It's a purple flower later in the summer. I like to use them in the higher, drier areas of rain gardens where their showy flowers are long lasting through the late summer. This is prairie dock. It has large, rough leaves. These plant specimens are still pretty young. In a couple of years, they'll get much larger. They're one of my favorite plants to use. They're quite tolerant of many soil types, but their stature really makes an impression in any rain garden. Hello, my name is Amy Tweeten, and I work for the city of Petoskey as the city planner. Uh, this rain garden was installed fall of 2018, I believe, so it's going on its second full year. It was part of the rain garden project through Tip of the Met Watershed Council. Uh, the reason it's located here is because on I'm on a slope on Jennings Avenue, so it's actually 
capturing in a heavy rain the stormwater that comes down the curb enters our driveway and it hits these rocks and it goes into and this area actually does fill with water on a heavy rain and you can see how it's settling out sand that has come from the stormwater so that's that's what i like about it is that it's capturing rainwater uh, and it is also attracting um, bugs and pollinators uh, and creating more diversity than just a plain old green lawn. Hi, I'm Rick Newman. I'm an architect here in Petoskey. And when I heard about the Tip of the Knit Watershed Council's Rain Garden Grant Program, I decided I had to apply as I was in the process of building a new house at the time. And fortunately, I was awarded a grant. And this basin here at the top um, is the first segment that was built by Chris Leifson of Wildflowers. Uh, being that this house uh, was being built on a hillside that slopes both to the south and to the west, I knew it was going to be important to try to keep stormwater on the on the lot and try to prevent erosion. So. Um, I really don't like gutters and downspouts, and so all the roof water drains into these basins, and all the driveway um, stormwater also drains into this upper basin, which when it fills up, overflows into the next basin, which when it fills up, overflows into the third basin. And all water, at least to date, with the storms we've had so far, have been captured on site with no, with no runoff down, down the hill. Thanks again for tuning in. I hope you learned a little bit more about rain gardens, and maybe you'll be inspired to plant one in your own yard. If you need a little more inspiration, be sure to check out this rain garden on the Petoskey Greenway on the corner of State and Petoskey. And if you need more information, be sure to check out the Watershed Council's website. We have a lot of information to help you out on how to build and construct your own rain garden.